The time and place for item 16. Report from the Feral Horse Committee, Horse Monument, letters and or resolutions for the commission. Um, item A is commission may approve, modify, create or deny a letter to the state water engineer in reference to the issue of giving water rights meant for wildlife to wild horses. Uh, this be presented by that committee chairman, Mike Stremler, and it's an action item. And Mr. Stockton, our Deputy Attorney General, has a statement. Okay, there was a concern raised earlier about the, the, the proposed letter, and I'm not sure what proposed letter the person was talking about, but the open meeting law requires that the public get um, any uh, support materials at the same time the commission does. It's my understanding from talking to the commissioners that none of them have this letter. I don't know how I got a copy before they did. But uh, so since they're getting a copy at the same time the public is getting a copy, then it's not a violation of the open meeting law to discuss the letter. So that's my opinion. Never seen no. I got another bag. Yeah, I went. I said they might take a break. Oh, did Copies hang on, hang on. They're There's given, quite a few. We'll give them to the commissioners and then I'll bring them back. Commissioners first. Oh, so this is that. No, it's a different letter. Are they new? It's got it. No, I don't come Oh, it's coming this way. You got an extra copy? Thirty. Thirty. You got a You got one? I think I might have seen a draft of this. No, this is an act. This isn't. This will be an action item, right? Okay, this is an action item for clarification. Mike Stremler. And uh, Mr. Floyd Rathman, committee members. Welcome. Let us know what's going on here. For the record, uh, Mike Stremler. I'm the chairman of this uh, Feral Horse Committee. And we had our meeting here a couple weeks ago in Fallon. We had quite a, quite a bit of uh, public comment. Uh, some of the comments were, were pretty good. A lot of horse advocates, wild horse advocates. Um, we had a lot of, there's a lot of misinformation about what Nevada is. And uh, Nevada is not uh, California. It does not have unlimited resources. And so I, I would say that would probably be one of the things that the public comments addressed was uh, why, why do we have to gather horses? Um, I got a list of notes here. There's a difference between feral horses and wild, free roaming wild horses and burrows. Feral horses are under state jurisdiction and our state is not doing a very good job of managing them either. So that's not the solution. Uh, the free roaming wild horses and burrows were protected by the act of 1971. Uh, in that act, they said they have to be maintained in thriving ecological balance. Uh, Joe Fellini down by, uh, I guess it's Rachel, has taken the uh, issue up on thriving ecological balance and beat the federal government on it. Uh, and based on water issues, that most limiting resource. Uh, so that brings me to the water rights. Uh, right now, the uh, federal government is applying for water rights under wildlife uh, for free roaming wild horses and burrows. Um, the letter that we've presented to you is an overview of what the water rights, in our opinion, is. And uh, if you look under the Code of Federal Regulations, Title 43, under range improvements, that's a different letter than the one we just handed out. I didn't get the one you handed out. Yeah. Is it to Jason King? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Is that, is that the letter? Yeah, this is, this is the letter that I'm talking to, I'm referring to. But in the Code of Federal Regulations, the 
federal government identifies under range improvement that there is such a thing as domestic livestock, there is uh, free roaming wild horses and burros, and there is wildlife and fish, and that there are three separate things. And right now, the uh, Department of, uh, our Division of Water Resources is giving water rights to the federal government under the guise of wildlife for these wild horses and burros, even though there's not a, a beneficial use declared by our, our Nevada law. So that is the Achilles heel of the federal government. Uh, I'll just point out the United States versus New Mexico, 1978, uh, this was all resolved in the Supreme Court. The water is the higher, the state is the higher authority, the highest authority on water rights. So they've got to apply for water rights just as uh, any individual has to. But if there's not a declared beneficial use, they can't surpass, they can't use the supremacy clause against us. So uh, moving on, uh, a lot of the issues that we talked about were cattle and sheep are far less right now and wild horses are far greater in numbers. Sheep are less than 10% or at 10% of what they used to be uh, and cattle are 50% or less and the horses are uh, one of the highest AML from 1971. 1971 is when they set how many horses could be on the, on the federally managed lands and we're <coughs> above it by, it's around 12 to 14,000. So a lot of the misinformation comes that well, they're letting horses and, I mean, cows and sheep eat the feed. Uh, no, it's just the opposite. Um, and then uh, we've got uh, some of the issues like water resources are being damaged by wild horses to the detriment of wildlife. Uh, and this is where Jason King uh, needs to uh, step in and protect those water rights because uh, it's my understanding that wildlife also has a vested water right. I don't know if Brian could elaborate on that, but I know on the vested water rights form it has for wildlife or livestock use. I don't know if you want me to spot in, but the, the actual language is that wildlife, and whenever you develop a water source, you have to ensure that wildlife have the, their, their historical access to it. Right. And, and what's happening now is the federal government is mandating that the ranchers give them a water right if you develop a source for free roaming wild horses. It's on the range improvement agreement. It's uh, item 12 or 13. I know I disagree with both of those, so it's one of those two. And that's why I don't sign those agreements. Um, and that's why I'm a thorn in the side to the Winnemucca district. Um, so that's something where the state can actually do something to protect the water for wildlife. And the ranchers have always been an advocate for wildlife and have always shared. Um, I've had several calls from different people on uh, the just compensation clause of the Constitution Fifth Amendment. Wayne Hage sits on our committee. He won against the federal government on just compensation for water. Uh, this hasn't been brought up for wildlife, but. So I got a list of solutions. And uh, our next meeting is gonna be in February in Eureka. Some of the solutions is put pressure on the state engineer to protect water rights from the federal government. And that's the letter that we've presented to you. Number two, identify HMAs that are not in thriving ecological balance. Wildlife groups can do this and put pressure on the federal government. Uh, Everybody that hunts, there's six, I guess there's 64,000 of us in the state that hunt, and I've heard more stories about, you know, I walk down, there's a bunch of horses at a water hole, I walk down there, the horses moved off, and a bunch of deer ran in to get a drink while I'm standing there. And story after story, Nevada Bighorns has got video of horses chasing bighorns off of water. Uh, that's not thriving ecological balance. That's where we can, we can work with the language in the 1971 law to say, hey, we're not in thriving ecological balance. Reduce the AML, get it to thriving ecological balance. So that's one of the solutions. And then uh, another thing that, and, and I've been working on this in Pershing County, I'm also the natural resource 
chairman for Pershing County, and, and we're getting the ranchers to file their vested water rights so the state engineer can protect us when that happens. So when, when the federal government is filing on those water rights. So with that, uh, Floyd Rathbun did a lot of the letter. Um, he's kind of the brains, I'm the puppet. And uh, anyways, he can uh, answer a lot of your questions with me about the letter. If you have issues with it, hopefully you guys get a chance to read it right now. And then I'll open, open up for questions from me. Question, Mr. Vogler. <clears throat> Mr. Stramler, have there been any, and I apologize for not being able to be at your meeting. I was uh, otherwise engaged. <laughs> one, one of the action items was, was you will be buying lunch at the next meeting. Okay, so. I thought, that's fair. Um, have you thought about pursuing what Wyoming did a few years ago? The Nevada or the Wyoming Department of Wildlife held the Bureau of Land Management's feet to the fire by suing them on behalf of the of the wildlife in the state of Wyoming and force them to get their horses to AML. Do you think that would be a feasible thing to do in this state? All right, Mike Strumler again. Yes, I do. And in fact, uh, we are getting in contact with the different wildlife organizations in the state, like Nevada Bighorns and Mule Deer Foundation and Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation to try to put not only uh, the brain power together but also the money power together to do that exact thing. I think that's a that's one of the strategies um, that we will be pursuing is holding their feet to the fire on that. Thank you. Um, we may need a minute to read this or got more questions. Go ahead, Ms. McBeth. <clears throat> um, first of all, I haven't had a chance to read this whole thing. It's pretty lengthy, and uh, um, uh, probably would like to spend a little bit more time with it. But um, it, it seems, just from what I have read, that you guys are advocating that that the wild horses have no right to water at all. That is the that is the Achilles' heel of the federal government. They have assume they have a right to water and they did when the ranchers owned them before 1971 because they were considered livestock as soon as they classified them as being something other than livestock and other than wildlife if they were if they were wildlife you guys would maybe be voting on a season for wild horses and then you'd really have some comments uh, but they're not they're not under your jurisdiction and the only time they come into uh, into the state's jurisdiction is when they are gathered <coughs> and then the brand inspector has got to be there to brand inspect them and they transist from being a free roaming wild horse <coughs> to then becoming livestock and when I were to adopt a horse if I went to Palomino Valley I adopted the horse and I took custody of it and then I took it back to my ranch and I turned it loose I would get a trespass ticket for livestock at large so you see how they've transisted from one thing to the other. Yeah, got it. Okay, um, there's another um, there's another Supreme Court case, um, and um, and I'm may, may may have to defer to uh, Dag Stockton um, uh, on this, but um, and the concept is uh, one of federal reservation of water rights. Uh, in other words, this. This does go outside of the state's purview over water. Uh, there is a, uh, it, it, it's, it's rather limited, uh, but there is a concept of federal reservation of water rights. Um, and um, the Supreme Court case, I believe, was the uh, case down in uh, Armagosa Valley uh, on the spring uh, down there uh, <coughs> has the pupfish. And um, in, and I uh, in my recollection of the case, and it's been a long time since I've read it, but the, my recollection of that case was is that when they created the national monument for the pupfish, I think it's a monument. Uh, they they created a federal reservation. There was no discussion of water rights, and we had all kinds of alfalfa farmers that basically were pumping down the water, and it started dropping the water level in Arugosa Valley. And the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service came in and basically said, "Stop!" Um, and uh, 
and uh, they had to it involved the state engineer and that case went all the way up to the United States Supreme Court and the United States Supreme Court said that when the federal reservation when the when the when the federal reservation for the monument was created there was a deemed reservation of um, of uh, water rights f for the purpose of that monument and so uh, now what we have so so that that's a case that I am aware of right and, now, and now, if I could just quick address that because I'm aware of that case as well and that's where me as a rancher I would say okay we've got this Constitution we got this Fifth Amendment and it says just compensation I have a water right it's held as a private property right and it's due just compensation and that was not argued yeah and and, and I understand you know that the, the conflict with that um, I guess I guess what I'm uh, two things I'm gonna the point two points I want to make um, one is is that uh, in analogy to that, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the federal government's position is going to be because uh, I can see them making the argument that when the um, uh, Wild Horse and Burrow Act uh, 1971 was created, there was a deemed reservation of water rights for those horses, at least to AML. So what I do like about your argument is, is that at least for over AML, they would Clearly, uh, you know, even under any reservation, uh, federal water rights be limited to water for uh, for the AML, and they're obviously going well over that. Uh, and uh, so, to the extent that there is uh, uh, insufficient water, you know, for either wildlife or livestock, then I think they've got a problem. Um, but I think this is a much more complex issue, um, and I'm wondering if uh, sending this letter to Jason King is the best way to deal with this issue. And, uh, and I'm wondering if maybe the commission shouldn't uh, ask for a legal opinion from the AG's office uh, on the issue as an alternative to this letter, because if we do that, then I think that would be, you know, I imagine there'd be participation by the state engineer, uh, but uh, at, at least at that point, we've got a decision from the, you know, the state's attorneys as to, as to what the issue is. And maybe, maybe you guys, uh, the two DAGs here can maybe discuss that issue, because I think that um, I think it's a good issue. Uh, I'm not sure that the way that this is that we're maybe presenting it here, you know, an all or nothing thing might be the best way to go. But you know, maybe we ought to think about it. Maybe a more reasonable stance uh, um, that is going to be more palatable to uh, and more forceful to the BLM because I think they I think they've got an issue here. I think that uh, anything over AML, they are clearly you know may maybe lacking in water rights. Uh, and uh, and I've never thought of that argument, but it's it's a it's it's it seems like a great argument, and uh, I I think that it, uh, what it does is it gives the state some control uh, over this issue, whereas uh, before you know we've been very frustrated you know by a lack of control. So I, I just throw that out to you as an alternative, and uh, and maybe the DAGs can and talk about this uh, this issue that I've I've raised. Uh, Stockton, I don't know how much you can. Uh just to, to, so everybody knows, I also represent the state engineer, and so um, I, I'm kind of in, a, in an awkward position here, um, to say the least. Um, you're right about the Federal Reserve Water Rights Doctrine. It's, that's, that's it in a, in a nutshell, but it has a lot more, I mean, there's a lot of nuance to it that I spend hours in front of the Supreme Court arguing about. So um, as to an opinion, I. My initial reaction is each one of these is going to be very fact specific because you got one of the sticks in your bundle and actually the reason that wasn't litigated in the Capert case was the devil's hole pupfish is one of your sticks in your bundle is your priority right. And in Capert, the federal government reserved the devil's hole in the late 30s, I think it was, and Capert came in and, and appropriated all his groundwater in the 50s and 60s. So the Capert water right was junior in priority to the senior water right at the Devil's Hole. And that's why there was no taking because you take your water right subject to a priority date. And, and uh, if the state engineer has to enforce, enforce by priority, that's not a taking because one of the things that when you get a water right that says, okay, you can pump your water if there's enough water to pump to satisfy all the senior water rights. If there's not enough to satisfy the senior water rights, then you, you junior water right holder, you can't pump. So, so that's why I think it's going to be very fact specific, and I don't think an attorney general opinion would, you know, it it'd be pretty complex, and I'm not sure how much help it would be. 
because it's got to be determined on a case by case basis by the you know based on who who has what priority you know most of the surface water rights their priorities are <coughs> you know pre 1900 so and, and but you're also right that they need to be adjudicated so if you have a vested right which some people on this commission do they need to be adjudicated and they need to quantify those rights and get their priority date established so I, I know that was kind of a long wandering answer but that's that's my position you know as a basically as a water rights attorney oh mr. Howell uh, is there anything you could add to that as far as the, the legality of it and I mean we're trying to look for some direction here as far as you know this letter and legality of it I, I really don't have anything to add mr. Stockton you said it very well yeah go ahead uh, yeah I have certificated water rights in that but uh, if uh, if a monument were established as proposed uh, you know like the Pickens situation and I owned water rights in there that predated the time that was set up. If it exceeded, if the the um, needs of the horses that are put in that monument exceeded the AML as was described um, by Mr. Uh, by Mike here, but that then their rights they wouldn't have a right then is that is the feds would not have a right with respect to water that i have a certificated right for see i haven't looked at the applications that are being made for the horse monument but as my understanding that they're change applications of existing water rights the the federal government's not claiming a federal reserved water right in this they're case the they're rights. just they're just claiming the rights that they bought with the in and I thought it was the actual monument itself, not the federal government applying for the water rights. But I, like I say, I have not seen the applications. If the, um, <coughs> have to think about that first. <coughs> the uh, water rights that would be uh, uh, basically go with the when when she bought the ranch, uh, unless they were specifically withheld. The water rights that are attendant to that property go with the sale correct so those rights would be available uh, to a person to be used whether it was for uh, livestock or for horses or for wildlife or whatever I'm assuming up right, pretty to the limits of the AML that were that were granted well up to the limits of the right and pretty much any beneficial use they can there's very few restrictions on on transferring your private water rights right. for obvious reasons. Mr. Bogler, Commissioner Capero, and Mr. Stremler, he that's already been established. If the, first of all, monument status for the Devil's Hole pupfish a long time ago that changed the status of the land. The BLM is operated under a multiple use concept, and and it's still technically, if you want to get into the argument, it belongs <coughs> to the state of Nevada. It wasn't legislative really reserve at the federal government like some of the forest reserves were so another issue but the issue with water is first of all the water in the state of Nevada doesn't run interstate so there's a little sh shadow there of legal federal controlling authority and it's been tested even in southeast Oregon where that water is in the Great Basin and the US Fish and Wildlife Service and an individual got in a fight over water and the US Fish and Wildlife Service lost and and never got it anywhere with it the state engineer made that exception so our little skinny thread of hold on that water for this state is is a paramount in getting the BLM to step up and comply with the act that they have now when it comes to the monument he has already said that Here, here's what's gonna have to happen and this is from the BLM this is from the meeting I went with the County Commission those horses will have to go to Ms. Pickens, there will be a brand inspection. She will have to identify them. The horses that are out there will have to be gathered off or caught and remarked, but there will have to be a transfer of ownership to her. And then she will be allowed to put so many horses out according to the project. Now, if she chooses to use that, they become livestock. If she chooses to use her watering rights on her springs and things that will obviously she I'm sure she got the ranch with all appurtenances and that appurtenance <coughs> will be waters 
she will be able to irrigate so many head of horses per her adjudication, which she could also get in trouble on that. I have several adjudications that say I am allowed to irrigate 2,500 head of sheep or water, I'm sorry, irrigate, use this water between April 1 and October 15th, or if it's uh, year-round, it, but it's specific in each one of those water right adjudications of the time of use and the amount of use. So she, there are a slug of things that she doesn't hasn't really got a grip on yet. So Mr. preliminarily, it's a long ways off. Oh, I'm sure. okay. Mr. Stockton, would uh, the assuming that everything went by the books and the water rights were acquired with the ranch, she gets the <coughs> title to the horses, and I would agree that would have to be part of it. And then fences the whole place off, which might cut off access to wildlife. That cannot be done. Is that correct? You cannot prevent wildlife from using sources of water that they had previously utilized. Is that correct? At least for surface water. Yes. Um, I have a question, um, Mr. Haskins, or perhaps uh, one of staff. You know, see this issue as it's coming up here about the water rights and the horses. What's Endow's history been with this? Has it been dealt with much by Department of Wildlife? <coughs> Brand new? No, our interaction with the BLM on horses is always uh, is based on uh, the AML level. And the, the basis of that is that we, the, the thriving ecological condition, maintaining the, we've tried to not take a position of being pro or con horse, but just managing the land appropriately, and, and that's based on AML at this time. It's a good position. I mean, and it all sounds, I mean, this, Looking, I'm looking at something that I think is not anti-horse. This is pro-wildlife. We're just talking about the water rights. I mean, as I read this, we're talking about the water rights that should be going to wildlife, and they're not going to wildlife. That's what this is. Is that more this, this is This letter is to... I guess point out your position or the, the your commissioner's position that wildlife has got a priority water right in the state of Nevada and that Nevada water law trumps the federal governments. When they took those horses away from the ranchers in 1971, that's their priority date is 1971. I can go back on my ranch to 1872. So I know that they don't trump me, and most of Nevada was settled by 1864. So I think the 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 loose cannon, or I don't know, I guess it's just the silver bullet for for wildlife is water rights. They've got a priority right, but the wild horses don't. And if you looked at like uh, I think it's NRS 533-505, it says. If anybody waters more than 50 head of livestock that belongs to another uh, for more than one day in a season, they are guilty of a misdemeanor for the second day, and every day thereafter is a separate offense. Uh, for, I think it's 533-495 says something about uh, you got to have a proprietorial interest in the livestock for you to make beneficial use of your water. So the water law is really... And, and it has a lot to do with livestock, and, and livestock and, and uh, the wildlife have got a symbiotic relationship. You know, they are compatible. What happens is the horses, uh, coyotes aren't taking horses down. You know, uh, a few lions do, and that's about it. So we've got, a, we've got this, I guess that's the loose cannon is, is the horses, and they're forcing the wildlife off of waters. All right. So. At some point, I, I fin we'll finish up the qu commission quickly, and we'll have public comment, and then we'll bring it back to the commission. All right. So, again, before we want to go to public comment, all right, Mr. Kevin. Uh, as far as the uh, uh, beneficial use for wildlife, it seems like that that was changed in NRS um, since I've been active in wildlife issues. So, I'm not sure it would predate the 1971. Does anybody? have clarification on that seems like we did that maybe in the 80s well <clears throat> that 
I think you're right, but however, that is the law today in, the, in that anyone who uh, controls a surface water right has to allow the traditional access that, that the wildlife had. But it, it wouldn't be before the 1971 is what I'm yep. saying, where the feds may claim that they have a right because they... No, uh, it still applies to their water okay. rights. Okay. Okay. You ready? Okay. Um, Last thing we'll go uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm right. just wondering uh, one additional question. Uh, we have a policy, uh, uh, Commission Policy Number 66. Did you guys look at that and consider that in your? It's basically uh, Commission Policy Number 66, Management and Use of Wildlife and Management Areas. And uh, can you guys hear him back there? No. Okay. I'm sorry. Let me make sure. Uh, he drank too much wine and he's mugged. Yeah. There is a uh, please. We have a commission no policy, commission. commission policy number sixty-six, and uh, uh, and it does have. Uh, I think it does have some stuff in here about water rights, or at least in one of our. I remember that in one of our. I'm not sure if it's this one. Or not now. But anyway. I think in one of our policy statements we have uh, a policy on uh, water rights, uh, and I was just wondering if, uh, if, as part of your process, you looked at that. I'm, I'm, I'm Floyd Rathbun, and in preparing for this, uh, we <coughs> looked at what we could find easily, and no, we didn't read that particular policy. Okay. In preparation for our next meeting, we've now gotten that information from the folks here on the staff, so we'll. We'll have that available to us before we have our next meeting. Okay. okay. Um, let's go with public comment. Do we have any people specific yes, on this issue? We do. Uh, Henry uh, Krenka. <laughs> Henry Krenka, I represent myself. Um, I put down on there on the B part instead of not the A. Oh, okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. We call you up and need a minute, just wave us off. Yeah. <laughs> Go on next person. Well, we we, we got a Beverly McGrath. I'm, I'm sorry I was outside an emergency phone call so if I'm covering something that I shouldn't be covering just interrupt me but um, I do, we certainly have disagreed uh, over some things but I think we can all agree that the Bureau of Land Management has done a horrible job of managing the horses it's absolutely disgraceful and we feel that the ranchers should be compensated by the BLM for water rights and providing water the checkerboard herd, checkerboard herd management areas have, and the subsequent fencing, uh, fencing, have actually forced private ranchers to supply water to the horses, to the astray horses, the feral livestock horses, equine, and the BLM horses. So uh, we think it's a travesty that the Nevada ranchers are taking the brunt of it when the ranchers in the Midwest are receiving millions of dollars every year for for caring for the BLM horses. Uh, let me just give you some numbers. In Oklahoma, John Hughes gets three million a year, and he has for some time, since 1993. South Dakota and Kansas, the Reed Brothers, Drummond Ranch, Tretman Ranch, Cross, Bell, and many others, all receiving two million a year. And yet none of the ranchers in Nevada are receiving any kind of compensation for caring for the wild horses, and they are. I visited ranches where the the horses are actually keeping the cattle away from from the water hole, which is not fair. I'd like to thank the commission for raising this issue. It's a gray area, and I think you need state legislation, an opinion from the attorney general, and anything else. And we'd be happy to work with you on that. Thank you very much. I got a Carol. Abel? Okay. Then I had a Dorothy Nyland. Did she want to talk on this? Yes, please. And then whose follows her? Followed by a Walt Gardner. Okay. Um, my name is Dorothy Nyland. I'm from uh, 
uh, Lyon County, Nevada, and I am a director on the board of the Wild Horse Preservation League. Uh, I went to the meeting uh, for the Feral Horse Committee in Fallon, where this letter was an item uh, but was not made available to people who went there. And uh, there were lots of reasons given as to why not. Uh, I said I had a camera, I'd even photograph it. That way we'd be able to take a look and try to understand uh, the viewpoint of that committee better. Um, <coughs> there were a lot of discussions there. A lot of wild horse people came to that. And you won't find them here today. I'm not exactly sure why, perhaps they're fed up. But as I told them in Fallon, both of my grandfathers were cattle ranchers. I don't have a problem with cattle ranchers or other things. I also am a proponent, and they seem to think it was a good idea, of uh, spreading out I think in this case it would be the underground water resources uh, to spread game, horses, cattle, sheep, whatever, over a larger area so they wouldn't be impacting the environment as uh, severely in one area or another. I know that, uh, I don't think that Wayne Hayes is here today, is he? Don't believe. He's on the horse committee. I know he personally told me that there's all kinds of solutions and it shouldn't be hard. Uh, he also made a statement there that uh, with more water, everything does better. He hasn't been able to keep up some of his water resource uh, things out there at the Pine Creek Ranch and that uh, uh, when they were, there was a lot more wildlife around. Um, I think, yes, that it's an issue that, that needs to be looked into, and I think there are a lot of, uh, a lot of solutions, as you said. Um, but I just now only received a copy of this letter, so I can't really respond to that at this time. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Got a Walt Gardner followed by, uh, Terry Farley. Walt Gardner, for the record. Um, I'm not an attorney like Mr. Stockton, but from what I've read, wildlife rights preempt all other rights on surface water. Not groundwater, but on surface water. Access to water. Access to that water. And uh, I, I think it's, it's an argument, and I think we need to strongly follow it and, and see how far we can take it. I think that we need to protect those rights. There's many instances where the water are, or the, the horses are running the, the wildlife off of that water. Thank you. <laughs> Do we have Terry Farley? If not, Don Alt, followed by uh, Willis Lamb. I'm Don Alt on the Battle Livestock Association. Uh, there's a question on ownership of those horses, actually. When I came to Nevada and <clears throat> I bought two truckloads of cattle, and right away, here was the brand inspector, filled out the brand inspection, he handed it to me. And he says, here's the title to your cows. Uh, that about two weeks later, I went to uh, Dalton Lowry's in uh, Fallon. I bought a trailer load of bulls. Brand inspector was there, handed me my copy of the brand inspection. Same words. He says, here's the title to your bulls. The BLM cannot produce title to these horses. Uh, I don't know how they claim them. 
uh, there was uh, a brand inspector in eastern Nevada that was questioning that and he was a rancher and BLM they reduced his AUMs to zero put him out of business and uh, don't argue with us you know that was the the point but I I think those are still astray horses thank you thank you very much Willis Lamb followed by Doug Busselman Willis Lamb Lyon County I think this is an important issue to try to get some focus on um, as far as the specific letter is concerned my suggestion with all respect to Mr. Stockton is that um, take this as information I wouldn't run with it because it was not made available to the people at the, the committee meeting nor was it properly agendized and again it's my belief that there'll be some people at Mr. Taylor's office on Monday however there are some concepts that are of concern to everybody one is it's a very valid issue to preserve water rights for wildlife we've also talked about what the federal government has reserved there's also I on uh, Friday I had a chat for a pretty long time driving in with the what used to be the water rights specialist for BLM and there's also some executive orders that could apply in this particular situation as far as ownership of horses which sounds like it speaks to the Madeline Pickens idea it there's plenty of uh, precedent I believe and probably some legal uh, support that if you could only water horses that belong to you you'd shut down most of the livestock operations in Fallon and other places where they actually hold other people's animals so the fact that Madeline Pickens may create some kind of giant boarding operation pretty much makes it a commercial operation for her. I'm not sure what water rights that she's legally acquired. I think the big issue is, and we'll probably talk about it in B, is how those water rights are utilized on her property if she does get her project going and how the uh, impact of the, particularly the mule deer herds up on Spruce Mountain can be mitigated so that what she does could actually perhaps help the herd rather than hinder it. I think that's a very valid issue. I think that's one of the things that we really need to speak to. In the meantime, my recommendation is let's do some research on this and figure out exactly where all the players fit with respect to BLM, their reservations, what they can do with rising and falling springs on federal property, and the issue of AML. I think those are all valid issues. I just don't think that you can spawn that from this letter because of a technical reason. Thank you. Thank you very much. We got Doug Busselman followed by Glenn Bunch. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, for the record, my name is Doug Busselman. I'm the executive vice president of Nevada Farm Bureau. Um, and I'm here to speak today uh, on the uh, question of whether you would approve, modify, create, or deny a letter to the state engineer. Um, this morning was the first opportunity we've had to review uh, the letter, so so there may be additional thoughts we would have. But but on the on the surface, from my per, or from our organization's perspective, the real question isn't about priority or a lot of the other things. It really comes down to the issue of beneficial use, and whether or not wild horses qualify as wildlife under the beneficial use statutes and and it would seem to us that 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 question is a legitimate question that this commission definitely has the purview to inquire about and whether or not a federal agency has the ability to file for water for beneficial use for wildlife and then use that water right that's given to them for watering wild horses given the fact that wild horses aren't wildlife and and whether or not the agency that's filing has legitimate cause to be granted water rights for wildlife when you as the as the state agency are the ones who are responsible for uh, wildlife management and, and that sort of thing so from our perspective 
Um, we believe that you, you have a responsibility to, to forward the question. Um, we would like to make sure that you do so in, a, in an orderly fashion so that it's not uh, uh, weakening your position down the road. And, and whether or not you do that as a result of this meeting or you bring it up at a later fashion when you've had more time to digest what the, what the proposal is for a, a, a letter, uh, we would strongly encourage you to take your best shot at making sure that that question is, is very well formatted so that you get an answer that fits the, the legitimacy of the situation. So with that, I would, I would thank you for your time and for your, uh, encourage you to go forward in, a, in an orderly fashion. Excellent, thank you. And as Farm Bureau, you're on the mailing list for this item. I want to make sure you are, because if we have um, anything comes out from this committee, it should go. Um, I, I didn't find out that there was such a committee until I mean, in the future, future. Exactly, future. and and we will be we will be working to get in touch with uh, the uh, the staff persons uh, from Endow who who work okay. on this, and and we will be uh, working to try to get involved as as the process unfolds. Uh, because it is a critical issue for us uh, uh, representing Nevada's farmers and ranchers and and so we're we're interested in the issue we've not been a, a avail or we've not been aware up until now but we will I just want to make sure we're on the Tron mailing list and uh, you're getting the information thank you uh, future thank you Len Bunch Glenn Bunch Mineral County I've almost set through it at a haste moment, filled out my card after setting through it, I've almost changed my mind. But um, I'll go ahead and state it. We've been in a, Mineral County has been in a, an endeavor for quite some time to save Walker Lake for wildlife, for fish and wildlife purposes. Uh, there's been property purchased with water rights. Uh, we found out in our last meeting with the water rights person as well as uh, the federal water master advised us that uh, the water was decreed to that property. He would deliver to that property. He didn't care how much we bought, how much we moved it to, how much we did it until a, just, a court, a, a judge said that water right would be moved. So th we're talking federal here. You, you're talking state. The state's buying the water, but we still can't move it because it's got to go in front of a federal judge to be moved from Mason Valley to the Walker Lake. So there's, for I'm, I'm, I'm seeing things here that sounds real great to me because this is the way we always thought it was until we encountered where we are with our other mission. So there's some different things rolling around out there, and, and I hope we need to get something to down on these horses. but. I come to these meetings and I, I'm wearing multiple hats, so I was just making that comment. Just okay. so you know, that's, that's a special dis, uh, provision in the, in the federal decree. That's not part of Nevada laws. So. Right. Thank you very much. At a George Corner, followed by uh, Paul Dixon. My goodness, Mr. Chairman, I defer to Part B. Mr. Dixon? Mr. Chairman, I defer to Part B. Anybody else? Corey Lytle. Uh, for the record, Corey Lytle, Lincoln Cab. My cab recommended approval before we even saw anything, just because we're just happy something's happening. Uh, this is a, it's a problem. It's been a problem. Wild horse issue with BLM's been a joke ever since the law came into act. And so we're just happy that these guys are working on it. Uh, Mr. Vogler's working on it. You know, the AML issue is, is a huge issue. It's, it's, uh, it's something that's, that's talked about a lot. And yeah, we need to target that a lot, but it's something that never gets done on the ground. And uh, we're happy anytime the BLM goes out and gathers. Um, we're happy anytime anything can happen to where the wild horse populations are even somewhat close to where they're supposed to be. And everybody knows that they're not. I just, there's just a quick comment. We voted for it in favor of whatever we can do, whatever modifications you can do. Send it forward. Well, however we can do it, let's get it done because horses are a huge problem. Thank you very much. Go ahead. For the record, Daryl Harwell, Washoe County. 
here again we do not have the support material so we made no recommendations on this for you guys thank you don't anybody else once twice okay. got hand mind earlier and i've changed my mind if you don't mind all right come right up ma'am welcome i'll make you listen to me <laughs> my name is carol abel uh again hidden valley wild horse protection fund uh first of all i would like to request that this be delayed with this letter just coming out there is no way that that there is time for anyone either the commission or the public <coughs> to look at the information given here and decide is this actually true or is it not and i'll give you a perfect example there have been claims of 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 the wild horses preventing other wildlife from watering well as many times as, as, as there are individuals who claims to have seen it, I can show you photos of wild horses watering next to other wildlife. There's information here that, in my opinion, is very incorrect. And I would like to, rather than stand here and tell you my opinion, I would like to show you some of the facts. Uh, one of the issues that's been brought up here is AML. And uh, in my opinion, AML is not appropriately set. It may be higher or lower. We don't know. But science has to show that. Not this commission nor the audience. Science has to show whether that AML is currently set at appropriate levels or not. I would like to ask that this be held over, giving people time to take a look at this information on here and to see if these statements are correct or not correct. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We have anybody else? Seeing no further public comment, we'll close public hearing, bring it back to the commission. Go ahead. I, I have a question of uh, Brian. The If I have certificated water rights, they're, they're tied to a basin. Correct. And if I want to move it from one basin to another, I have to go back to the state engineer to reallocate that water right. Okay. Is that move, you can't just move water from one basin to another. Your water right is specific to the basin. Right. Now, if you're talking about pumping it to the other basin, that's called an interbasin transfer, and there's, I think it's 533, 360 has a list of things you have to comply with, and then there's a new statute about inventorying water rights. So, Interbasin transfers are a huge sure. undertaking. Okay. Um, okay. Hey, in respect to this, in respect to this letter, and just throw out, we've got we've got options. One is we can adopt it as as presented. We can throw it off to another meeting. Um, I think anything we did adopt, I would say if anybody has made, if a motion is made to adopt, you know, make sure we include in that just um, something to allow Suzanne to put in the correct, put it on correct stationary and the correct, um, all that name of the commission. Yes, Mr. Cavan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I would uh, uh, think that we need some time to look at this thing. It's a complex issue. Um, I haven't even read it. I'm not going to try and read it and comprehend it when I'm trying to listen to the the rest of what's going on here. So, I, I would I would just uh, think yep. that we should uh, bring it up at a later meeting, um, so that at least everyone involved can uh, can ask ask honest questions and, and make sure this is the direction we want. <coughs> Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I want to echo that. I, I, but I also want to say that I really That's think this second. is a. Oh, um, that wasn't a motion. That was a comment. All right. um, I really want. I, I'd really like to see us pursue this. I think this is uh, this is a really good issue. I think that uh, we've we've got uh, we've got something. And if we get if this is uh, uh, this may give us some real solid leverage. Uh, against the BLM and dealing with this horse issue, so uh, so I do support it. But I have not read it. I uh, would like to read it and digest it, and uh, and I'll I'll certainly have some, probably some comments on it. Mr. Perl. thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I would uh, concur. I, uh, I I will tell you this that uh, I'm 
very familiar with the Sheldon, probably more so than most of the people in this room. I've hunted it for 50 years and uh, go there every year uh, scouting. And I can tell you this, I have definitely seen horses run, uh, run antelope off of Round Mountain Lake off of uh, some of the other uh, uh, down near Smith Lake uh, and many of the other water sites. I have seen the evidence there have been no cattle on that uh, on the Sheldon for at least 15 years, maybe 20. So it's you know any of the damage that's being done to the uh, to riparian areas is being done by the horses, no question about it. And so there is a question of how do we uh, how do we uh, do our stewardship in providing for wildlife, including their water needs? I think we do need to pursue this uh, further. I'm a little concerned about the wording uh, in it, uh, and maybe there's a better way to do it. But I commend you for bringing it here. I think it's necessary to. Know, continue your work and let's see if we can't uh, come up with something more. I, I don't think anybody on this board probably disagrees with the, any of the intent that you have, <coughs> have indicated in that. Thank you. All right. Mr. Vogel. I have a quick question. Mr. Stremner, my understanding is the state engineer has already issued a permit. Permits, yes. Multiple permits. The to the Bureau of Land Management. The reason, the reason I know is uh, my neighbor, Mick Casey, had a spring in Dixie Valley that they filed on. And uh, Sam at Division of Water Resources says, well, yeah, they got to have water. And I said, well, no, they don't. And, it, and so that's how I became aware of it. Nevada Cattlemen Association has uh, identified quite a few places where they have. Nothing has gone to certificate yet. It's in the permit. Okay. So then, Mr. Stockton, I would ask you, uh, we would still have time to make protests. We would still have time to do all of these things as a misuse of water, right? Or maybe um, that, that I mean the the um, NRS five thirty three four fifty says any person aggrieved by a decision or order of the state engineer can file an appeal, and so um, whether that applies to the issuance of the certificate, I don't know. But it's too late. You only have um, is it 90 days after final publication to file a protest. So it may be too late to file a protest to the original application, but it may not be too late to um, file an appeal to the final certificate, although the courts haven't decided that issue yet. So time is of the essence, gentlemen. However you look at it, we need to act quickly. And, and I don't, you know... I, I whatever your pleasure is, but it's a, whether it's this meeting or the next, it needs to be. It needs to be dealt with and dealt with as soon as possible. I said it's a terrible thing to set. Mr. Wallace, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I I too agree that this is an extremely important issue, and uh, since we just received this letter, we don't like it. Half an hour ago, whatever it may have been, I feel that we all need time to look at it, to get information and uh, make sure we're going down the right path so that we're in the right direction to begin with and don't have to start over. So if you're prepared for a motion, I'm, I'm ready. Okay. What, uh, well, what kind of time <clears throat> interval are we worried about here? 90 days. From when? From when they first... Mm -mm. If, if I might, uh, when, they, when they applied for the permit, you had 90 days from the time that the application, and it was, notifi it was notified in the local papers. And then, but most of it's already been done. Uh, most of this is, I, I would strongly recommend that you guys also would postpone this till the next meeting so that we don't have any violations of open meeting law and all that stuff, because otherwise, there could be a lot of monkey wrenches thrown into this deal. So I do on the side of this for a couple of years, right? When is this They've been doing this for a couple of years. A couple of years, right? Yeah, yeah, but they can't prove beneficial use because they don't own the. There, there's some there's some issues. Okay, um, the, your next meeting date is that going to be before our next February um, commission meeting? So our February commission meeting is what fifth and fourth or fifth? Fourth fifth February. 
we're at. Ours, ours is going to be, I think, towards the end of February, but, you know, there's plenty of time to move it up. So. Where we can, or have another, or something. So this... Well, it's just up to the, the commission's. Have, if, have further if, it's, direction. Yep. if it's up to the commission's favor, um, we'll just kind of discussion here. Would we want them to look at it again, or do we want it and have the input and changes done at that committee, or do we want to have it done here, and we and then we have sufficient input on this from the committee? That's kind of I think that's kind of where we're at, and whenever whatever motion is made, hopefully we'll reflect. That. All right. Which I'm ready for motion. You were the guy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that we postpone the discussion on this until the next meeting. And Mr. Strimler, do you think we can uh, move your meeting up so you guys can discuss this? Yes, I do. Okay. And allow the committee to go over this again and make sure that we're everything's right, and then. We can get it out to the cabs and the public so that we can have a, a meeting where we can all discuss it instead of most people not having any idea where we're at. So I move that we postpone it until the next meeting. Second. Okay, it's been properly moved and seconded to forward this to the next meeting. And a portion of that motion was to have the, have the, have the committee look, go ahead and look at it again. Does everybody understand the motion? Yeah. Okay. Everybody understand the motion? All in favor of the motion signify by stating aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes eight to zero. All right. And thank you very much for bringing this up. This is some very innovative stuff. We definitely, if you have any more ideas like this. I do. Good. Um, bring them up. And as soon as you get them out of your committee, have, um, if, if, and you're up, you're up next, so you don't need to go very far. Well, this horse, this Pickens Horse Monument is actually, I guess that's, but um, I might have a few questions around that, if that will get for me. But um, when you do come up with any of these items, you know, just make sure we get them to Suzanne so she can hit that forward all button she's got, and then we'll be good on it. Um, our next item is the commission will discuss the Pickens Horse Monument in Eastern Nevada and may provide guidance to staff 